An investigation is underway in Japan into why more than 600 children suffered from convulsions and vomiting after watching a television cartoon program. It's thought that bright flashing lights in the cartoon, pocket monsters, were to blame. Andrew Burroughs reports. around 700 people were hospitalized in Japan after the first and only airing of the episode Electric Soldier Pokemon from Pokemon. According to publications in various newspapers from the time, the patients presented cases of seizures, conscious loss, bloody vomit, migraines, and even memory loss. All of this after 20 minutes from the beginning of the episode, concurring with a scene where the colors on screen changed drastically 54 times in less than 5 minutes. After this event, Japan's health ministry suspended the airing of the show nearly during one year. At the same time, investigations were started under the suspicion of negligence on TV Tokyo's part, as this company oversaw its situation. Many doctors identified the symptoms as episodes of television epilepsy, best known as photosensitive epilepsy which is triggered by diverse light effects, including stroboscopic lights, or strokes, like the ones used during the episode. This theory was confirmed when studying the medical history of those affected, reason why the broadcasting of the episode was globally forbidden, while various Japanese animation studios established guidelines which should be abided by every animated show in hopes to avoid a repetition of the event. This incident took place during the show's first year of airing, and although its fame hadn't reached the level that it possesses actually, it had already managed to become one of the most watched shows at the time, especially among kids and teenagers, whereby it is not surprising the majority of the victims were minors. Even less, once photosensitive epilepsy is nature, and even epilepsy in general, is taken into consideration, as this condition is often developed during childhood, and in many cases, there is a possibility of being outgrown. In general terms, epilepsy is a nervous system disorder, in which the brain sends abnormal signals that result in temporary loss of control over brain-coordinated processes. These episodes are called seizures or epileptic crises. Although the term seizure has been made popular in mass media as violent body shakes and conscious loss, this is only one way the condition can be presented. Other epileptic crises are absent seizures, characterized by the momentary loss of consciousness, tonic seizures, which cause muscular stiffness, a tonic causing falls due to loss of muscular tone, clonic, presenting repetitive and involuntary muscle movements, myoclonic or sudden limb jerks, focal without memory loss or simple partials, altering the senses and creating spontaneous movements, and finally, focal with memory loss or complex partials, which cause fainting spells and repetitive movements. It is worth noting that the different seizure types are solely symptoms, and therefore, the usage of strokes does not cause epilepsy, but trigger the symptoms, and even if these are not the disorder itself, they can be dangerous on their own account, by exposing the affected to a bigger brain damage. Not every person who suffers from epilepsy is also photosensitive, but since this condition affects the nervous system, they can present sensorial sensibility, which is also challenged by strokes. In addition to this, kids between 1 and 15 years are the most prone to develop photosensitivity when they possess a genetic predisposition to epilepsy and are exposed to this kind of effects. The available information about photosensitive epilepsy has done nothing but grow since the events elicited by the famously forbidden Pokemon episode, turning strokes and seizure triggers as a piece of general culture. At the same time, 
multiple guides about ways to avoid triggering seizures with audiovisual content have been developed. Among the recommendations emitted by professionals on the area are flashing sequences must not last more than five seconds, including sudden color changes, especially red and blue. Flashing sequences must not use more than three or four flashes per second when they cover more than 25% of the screen. The movement of contrasting color patterns or uniform text must be avoided when they cover more than 25% of the screen. Contrasting color patterns or uniform text must not be used in more than 40% of the screen. These recommendations apply to television, movies, concerts, and web content. Regardless of this, Pokemon was not the first, not the last piece of audiovisual content to trigger seizures on its public. On the contrary, the usage of strobe lights has been popularized in the last few years, including its prolonged application in movies and shows aimed to kids. The Incredibles is a kids' movie produced by Walt Disney Pictures and Pixar Animation Studios. This film not only represented a big box office success, but it continued the trend of Fox Studios to develop new technologies for every project. In this case, character skin effects were improved, and innovative hair and clothing simulations were created. More than 10 years later, the movie sequel came to theaters, attracting people of all ages, showing once more their ability to improve digital animation in a short amount of time, especially when Pixar is involved. Despite this, the responsibility techniques from both production houses didn't follow the same pattern, because the day of its premiere, many audience members reported on social media the constant usage of strobes during the movie. At least five scenes with flashing sequences, all with a duration between 15 and 90 seconds, representing 3 and 18 times more length than the recommended maximum. Not mentioning that, according to the audience, say scenes were vital to comprehend the plot. Before June 15, 2018, day of the premiere, no warning about strobe lights was given to any medium. Not in the trailer, not in box office, not even a message prior to the showings. The warnings were studied by audience members after the premiere and many cases of seizures inside of the theaters. After this, Disney immediately and movies inviting theaters to use a photosensitivity warning at the box office. Beyond being different content, from different studios, Pokemon and The Incredibles 2 have clear differences. The available information and the implemented measures. It doesn't have to be spelled out. 1997 and 2018 were very different years. Not only internet access was limited in 1997, the only instance of any popular audiovisual material causing seizures of its consumers prior to Pokemon was in 1981 with the video game Space Invader, phenomenon registered in a medical journal of the time, which, to this day, is hard to obtain. In addition to this, it seemed like safe case wasn't as documented as the caused by electric soldier Porygon. Despite being able to disassociate from any responsibility because it was a little known fact, TV Tokyo decided to maintain its integrity by forbidding the episode in question and cancelling the TV show during a year with the goal to focus that time into performing investigations to prevent the repetition of the event, in addition to joining forces with other Japanese studios to regulate content. Helping perform more studies about photosensitive epilepsy, showing respect for their audience. Coming to 2018, the knowledge about photosensitivity and ways to prevent seizures is higher, as it should be expected after 20 years of one of the most significant events for the epileptic community. At the same time, it's rare to meet someone without an internet connection. Yet, the number of titles that employ stroboscopic lights and the access to them keeps increasing. 
Stranger Things, American Horror Story, Sense8, Mad Max Fury Road, Breaking Down Part 1, are only a few of the audiovisual pieces that caused seizures in their public before the premiere of The Incredibles 2. The damage caused by this movie not only could have been avoided through comparison and simple common sense, there are multiple guides on the best practices to avoid triggering seizures, as well as an automatic test through a Harding machine and an online version of the same. According to its website, the Harding test, developed by Cambridge Research Team, analyzes videos in search of specific seizure-provoking patterns, generating a certificate that settles whether or not the film is safe. The biggest problem related to this test is its elevated price, which is an impediment for independent production, but certainly not for Disney. The Incredible Zoo has a 120 minutes length. Films of this duration require a payment of 130 pounds sterling, around 162 US dollars with 4 cents. The budget for this film was 200 million dollars. Even if this was a case of economical restraint, the United Kingdom and Japan required to pass the Harding test before getting approval to distribute any audiovisual material. The Incredibles 2 premiered in both countries, but the movie that was shown was edited to decrease the stroboscopic effects without altering the plot. Not only the test was performed before the premiere, but the original version was used in the rest of the world, regardless of its failing grade, and without employing any warning before the seizure cases. Is it necessary to explain why this decision could be considered blatant negligence? It's incredible to notice that TV Tokyo took better measures in 1997, when there was virtually no information available. Way better than Disney and Pixar multi-millionaire enterprises in 2018 and with access to hundreds of studies performed across 20 years. According to law and bioethics Dr. Eleanor Allen, human dignity implies the necessity of every human being to be treated on the stance of equality and the opportunity to enjoy the fundamental rights that derive from them. Is not health a fundamental right? Many advocates of this and many other seizure-inducing films argue that the creator's artistic vision shouldn't have to be sacrificed to accommodate a few people. This opinion not only shows a lack of empathy, but is also irresponsible. Consider attempts against the life and safety of more than a million and a half persons in the world. Artistic vision is important, but the line needs to be drawn where the other people's rights start. In other words, if the way you choose to express yourself ends up with someone at the hospital, your artistic vision should take a backseat. Let's also consider that exposition to stroboscopic lights can be so harmful. In 1997, Japan's army tried to develop a weapon based on them. This is not about censorship. It is not even about banning strobe lights, but about its regulation. Strobes have good uses within the deaf community, helping them enjoy concerts and employing them as smoke alarms or even alarm clocks. However, there is a big difference between their employment for emergencies and other domestic situations where the users are conscious of their existence and using them in front of people with no warning during recreative activities. Creators should have all the freedom to develop their artistic vision as long as they follow the existing guidelines on the number and proportion of flashing scenes on screen, as well as giving a clear, timely, and accurate notice of its usage and nature, providing on-site methods to mitigate any adverse effects that might arise on people who are not aware of their condition. It's from those warnings that audiences can decide the content they consume and demand safe versions of it. Furthermore, these alternate versions should be the norm at public spaces, 
reserving the special effects for DVD and streaming services as a special feature of the same, but never being applied to content marketed to minors, as this is the group with more risk of photosensitive epilepsy. We are in a situation where we cannot afford to ignore recommendations for content creation. The event related to strobe lights in mass media should be motive enough to take action, since we forgot so quickly about what happened after the electric saw the opponent and allowed these effects to be used in an irresponsible manner and become a cinematographic trend. It's not only about avoiding seizures on those who already suffer epilepsy. It's avoiding kids developing it and making sure the adults who through it won't relapse due to constant exposition, losing their driver's license and even their livelihood. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month, but the events and research are of no use if the community remains ignored. We have all the necessary resources to decrease the numbers. We could live in a world that's safe from seizures. We only need to understand that artistic vision is not superior to health.